Hi there, welcome to Shiloh Tabernacle London. We're located in South East London in Woolwich Dockyard, Block 1, Unit 9, Dockyard Industrial Estate, Woolwich Church Street, SC18 5PQ. Join us for our Bible study every Friday from 7.30 to 9pm. And you can't miss our Sunday services packed with prayer, vibrant worship and a powerful word. First service is 9am to 10.30, followed by our family service from 10.30 to 12.30. And now, for the best part, let's get into the word. Amen. I want to appreciate my beautiful wife for sticking with me all these 27 years. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. You missed a very good... Uh, thank you so much, Sean. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 20, 27 years of being with me. Hey. <laughs> I am not a joker. Huh? In my language, they saying, Tindy Mary, Tindy Kusana, Tindy Mary, you may take your seats. Sticking with me for 27 years old. <laughs> 27 years, rather. 27 years. Jesus Christ. By the way, I think that's when I got married at 27. Did you know it was 27? 27. Yeah, 27. That's when I got married. So do the math. 27. So if for you are 23 and you're thinking you are, you, you are, oh my God, you are, there's nobody coming from 27. Age is just a number. Do you understand? So we thank God. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much for being there. And thank you so much for being in my life because she is the one that led me to the Lord. I was not like this. Titus, we have a lot in common. A lot in common. I was not like this. I was a bad boy. I was the, a bad, I think the baddest. <laughs> My goodness, bad boy. I just thank God that, you know, my sons are not like me at, at my age. Hmm? At the age where they are. I was drinking all sorts of alcohol from the local brew, Tonto, to the highest. No alcohol would pass me by. You understand? One day my father looked at me and said, he just shook his head and said, you have three diseases. And if you're not careful, they are going to be chronic. <laughs> Disease number one. You love the straw. That's why he put it. You love the straw. You love alcohol. Disease number two. You love dresses. You, are, you love women. This is number three. You are like a chimney. You love smoking. If you do not stop them, you are going to die. Thank God. I met a woman who challenged me one time and says, Why are you drinking? Why are, you are a young man. Why are you killing yourself? No, no woman had ever asked me such a question. I said, what? what? Who is this asking me this question? And indeed, I went home and asked myself, why am I doing this? I did not have any, any my face was like, you know, these ampicillin tablets, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, double color capsules, I, blue here, red here, you know, <sighs> full of scars on my face. I don't remember a day that I was sober in those days. But thank God for the power of transformation. I met Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, and he turned my life around on the 25th of December, 1993, and I never went back in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, that... Uh, that, that hmm. The appetite for alcohol disappeared. The appetite for cigarettes disappeared. His appetite for women disappeared. I became a new living creature under the power of most, most high God in the name of Jesus. And listen, listen, listen. All the guys who discarded me, all of them, by the way, they're not here today. 
those guys that I used to hang out with, they're not here. They are died. I don't know about you. Every morning I wake up in, and I look in the mirror and I ask myself, Lord, how, how am I here? How is it that I'm here? So there's nothing that the Lord cannot turn around. There's no habit that the Lord cannot turn around. There's no sin that he cannot turn around. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that brings, that, <laughs> that becomes a good segue into my message today. The message today is, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can and he will in the name of Jesus. Jesus can and he will in the name above every other name because he is the God above all names. He is the Lord. He is God all by himself. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, the Bible says in the Amplified, Now to him, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we assemble at your table, we call upon you, come, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, you are welcome. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in your power. You are welcome in your splendor. Heavenly Father, come and reveal your word to us. Come and rebuke. Come and teach. Come and educate. Come and elevate in Jesus' mighty name. I surrender in myself, in my intellect into your hands. My tongue over to you. Take over. The Holy Spirit, we call upon you. Monday, bro, bless somebody in this place. Bless somebody online that will watch today and tomorrow and the day after. Touch their lives. Let there be a total transformation, my Father God, because you are a God who can do all things. According to Ephesians chapter 3, the Amplified says, Now to him, in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, that power is not without you, it's within you. The power of God is within you. It just needs to be activated. It is there. The power of God is there. It says, according to the power that works within us, he's able to carry out his purpose. Do super abundantly, far above, over and above all that we dare ask or think beyond our highest prayers. Listen, he's able to do beyond your highest prayers. Listen, mothers who are here, pray for your children. Keep on praying for them. The more you pray for them, at times the worse they go. Keep on praying for them. That's what happened with my mother. She would pray. She would pray. She would pray and pray and pray. She would give me money and say, here is the money, but I don't even know that it will pass by that trading center. And it was, and it was true. I would spend almost three days in that trading center. Three days. Drink all the money and get debt. But she kept on praying. She would give me the money with tears flowing down her cheeks. I would just be like here and I would just disappear. Just I would disappear. Disappear. They would say he was here. Where is he? And that would be three days later. That's when they will see me. But prayers, our God is able to do even higher above than your highest prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Higher than your desires, than your thoughts, than your hopes or your dreams. He is able. Yes, he can. And yes, he will. Whatever situation it is, he, he can do it and he will do it for you in Jesus' mighty name. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Paul writes to the, if, the Corinthians and says, And God is able, <laughs> he is able to make not some grace, but all grace to abound to you, to abound to you. I stand here because of the grace of God. I do not stand here today because I am holy. I do not stand here because I am an angel. It is by the grace of God that keeps abounding. It's the grace of God that picked me out from that alcohol, uh, alcoholic, alcoholic life, that taught, picked me out from that lifestyle and transformed me. Around. It is the grace of God. He is able to make his grace abound to you. So that having all sufficiency in all things at all times. Did you hear that word? How many alls are in that, in that sentence? Oh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That you may abound in every good work. So nobody can stand and boast that it's because of him. <laughs> because he's handsome, because he's beautiful, because he's educated, because he's loaded. No, no, no. It's by his grace. 
it's by the grace of God. You missed a very, 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 very important place where we are to, we are to appreciate God for his grace. Hallelujah. He is able to make all grace abound. Even this morning, he's making grace abound. To you online, he's making grace abound. To you in this temple, he's making grace abound. In whatever situation, arras, that you may have all sufficiency in all things at all times. That you may abound in every good work. Hallelujah. This brings me to my portion of scripture where I want us to zero in this afternoon. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. Matthew chapter 8. Jesus Christ has just been on the mount preaching that powerful message which we call, what do we call it? What do we call that, that mount? The Beatitudes. Hallelujah. And he's coming down from the mount. Wherever Jesus went, the Bible says he was thronged by crowds. Crowds. So in verse 1 of Matthew 8, this is Matthew, this is Matthew's first record of a miracle of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has just shown his, his kingship. But right now he's about to show his authority. His authority. And his authority is at work right now in somebody's life in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says in verse 1 of, of, of Matthew chapter 8, if you're writing notes, Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. We're going to read from verse 1 to 2 and I'm going to be reading from the Amplified. The Bible says, when Jesus came from the mountain, great throngs followed him. Great crowds followed him. Notice that. What? Who are following him? Crowds. <laughs> and then behold, out of, suddenly, the Bible says, and behold, a leper came up to him, prostrating himself. He worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to cleanse me by curing me. Did you hear that? He said, you what? You are able. Jesus Christ has been followed by crowds. Crowds are... <laughs> most crowds do not have an agenda. They follow. You are just following. If you met some people in that crowd, you would ask them, where are you going? They would say, I don't know, but I'm just following. I hope you're not part of the crowd in the name above every other name. You need to stand out of the crowd. We may be here together, 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, however, however much we, how many we are. You need to stand out. You need to have an agenda. Do not just follow. They were following. A crowd was following him. But suddenly somebody steps out of somewhere and begins to attract Jesus Christ. He stops him. I am reminded of the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was being thronged by many people. But this woman, this woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, this woman who, you know, somebody, if you have been hemorrhaging for 12 years, that means there's, I don't know how much blood is left in you. You don't have strength. And by virtue of the fact that she was bleeding, she was not even supposed to be amongst people. But she took a level and says, you know what, I am going. And she, the Bible says she said to herself, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. She managed to squeeze through the crowd and touch Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And hey, the procession stopped. There are some people who have got the capacity to stop Jesus Christ while others are just following. Something spectacular happened in Matthew chapter 8. A leper. <laughs> a leper. Just that word, a leper. A leper coming to him. <laughs> this word, leprosy was a, is, is a disease that affects the skin. The mucous membranes and the nerves. It causes, the, it causes you know, limbs or, you know, to, to, to die and to begin to fall off. The hands, the, the fingers begin to fall off. So I don't know whether he still had fingers on him or not. I don't know even whether he had toes or not. But somehow, <laughs> somehow, 
that did not stop him. What has fallen off in your life that is stopping you from worshipping Jesus Christ, the son of the living God? Is it a husband? Is it a marriage? Is it children? Is it a job? What is it that is stopping you? This man could not allow anything to stop him. He was unstoppable. In severe cases, leprosy caused disfigurement, disfigurement of the face, deformities, all sorts of things. And in, that, in those times, lepers were considered unclean. Unclean because of the disease. So they avoided the public. They were not meant to be in the public. They avoided the public. They avoid, avoided touching others so they do not spread the uncleanness to others. This dreaded disease or infection forced the victim to live apart from others. They were outcasts. If this is London, they would look for a place which is, you know, secluded. And that's where the, 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 the leper's colon was. And whenever they would try to come out, they had to go with the bells, calling, uh, uh, ringing the bell and, 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 and saying, unclean, unclean, warning the person ahead not to, not to even walk near them. They were outcasts. No person in his right man, mind would dare touch a leper. And many Jewish people in those days considered Gentiles, they considered women and leper, lepers out as outcasts. Can you imagine? In fact, most of the Pharisees, every morning you'll find them praying, I give thanks to the Lord because I am a man and I am not a woman. I give thanks to God because I am a Jew and I'm not a Gentile. I give thanks to God because I am a free man and not a slave. I am not a leper. That's how, that's how you know, twisted they were. In the Old Testament, lepers were isolated from so society. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45 to 46. If you're writing Leviticus 13, 45 to 46, the Bible says that the leprous person, this is the law of Moses, the, Moses, the, leprous, the, the leprous person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes. Can you imagine? The disease forced you to put on torn clothes. Thank you, Elisha. Torn clothes and they let their head, the, the hair and, 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 and let the hair of his head hang loose and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out unclean unclean wherever he's going unclean the situation forced this person to become like that and verse 46 says, and he shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. There are some things that have caused us to become outcasts. As long as that situation is still on you, there, 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 there are circles that call you unclean. It says he shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. Outside. <laughs> Listen. Only God could heal a leper. Only God could heal a leper. And God had done it before. This was not his first time to do it. it wasn't his first time to do it. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Exodus 4, verse 6 to 7. Elisha, if you scroll down on that, on that list, you will find all the scriptures there waiting just for you to click on them. Exodus 4, 6 to 7. The Bible says, again, the Lord had said to him, who? Speaking to Moses. Moses was in this, you know, ping pong with God. How shall I go? How shall I know that? How shall I know that you have sent me? When he was about to send him to the children of Israel, to Egypt, to rescue them. So the Lord is giving him signs. And one of the signs is this. He said, put your hand inside your clock. And he put it inside his cloak. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. <laughs> then God said, put it back. And he did. So he put it, he put his hand back inside his cloak. And when he took it out, behold, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. God, was, God, God is able to heal leprosy. Numbers 12, 10 to 16, the Bible says, this is after Moses had, 
married an, a Kushite woman and he, had, he, had, he, he was in the wrong. That's why it's very, very important for you never to begin to criticize your leaders. A person that God has put, put in place, a person that God has put in place, a person that God has put in place, let God deal with him. It's not your position. It is not my position to begin to belittle him. Did you understand? M M Miriam and Aaron, they begin to complain, what have you done? Why have you married a foreigner? He was in the wrong. But that was not their position. And because they did that, what happened? God struck them with leprosy. Struck Miriam with leprosy. Numbers 12, 10 to, uh, to, to 16. The Bible says, when the cloud removed, when the, when the cloud removed from over the tent, behold, Miriam was leprous. leprous. She was leprous, like snow. And Aaron turned to Miriam, and, and behold, she was leprous. My God. And Aaron said to Moses, Oh my God, do not punish us because we have done foolishly and have sinned. They have done foolishly and have sinned because they spoke against their leader. He's their brother, remember? Do you, do you understand? I am her husband. But the time has come. To, there, there, are some, there, there are some instances where I am not the husband. I am the pastor. And if she, and if she cannot differentiate between that, then there's a problem. These are my children. There's a time when I'm a daddy and there's a time when I am pastor. Do you understand that? So they have got to talk to me as they are talking to pastor. I may look uncollected. I may look, you know, queer to you. But God in his infinite wisdom has chosen to make me here. He has chosen that. Even me, I don't know. Like I told you, I was, for me, I was minding my, my own business, drinking alcohol. I don't know how I'm here. I don't know how I'm here. So you stand there and begin to Chris and, put, and, and dress me. It's up to you. But I could ever. It's up to you. Do not act foolish. I, 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 I'm serious. Don't, don't act foolishly. Don't. I know it. You stand there and talk. You think I don't know? I know. I know. It's okay. For me, I, I, I'm unstoppable. That will not stop me. I will preach the gospel as it is given to me. Let God deal with me. That's not your position. It is not my position. Because there are people who are higher than me. Even me, there are people who are higher than me. It is not... I. If you come to me and begin talking nonsense about those people who are higher than me, I will shut you up straight away. Straight away, I will shut you up. Shut up. Shh. That is not my, that's not my portfolio. God has got to deal with these people. So this woman, she stepped into a place that was not hers. Straight away, God struck her with leprosy. And this is what Moses, uh, Aaron is saying. He runs to Moses. Right now, he notices that Moses has the power. Because Moses speaks to God direct. The man, the man. <laughs> says, listen. listen. And he says, oh, my Lord, do not punish us because we have done foolishly and have sinned. Verse 12. Let her not be as one dead, whose flesh is half eaten away when he comes out of his mother's womb. Verse 13. And Moses cried to the Lord. Moses cried to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we are called to do. You may speak about me. You may, you know how many, somebody, I think somebody had this picture where a pastor in the, in the front, the pastor is, is preaching and, and, and is worshiping and is ministering to the people. But when you look behind him, there are, men, there are daggers stuck in his back. There are spears in his back. There are all sorts of things that have been stuck in his back. Those things do not stop us from serving you. No. Moses would have said, <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> let, let, let her die. Let her, but he interceded for her. We intercede for you. I will continue praying for you. I will continue loving you. I will continue serving you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I, the, love, the love of Christ compels me. Moses interceded for her. He cried, oh God, please heal her. Heal her, please. Please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, if her father had spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? 
<laughs> God let her face the music for seven days. Let her be shut outside the camp seven days. And after that, she may be brought in again. Let her go and, 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 and cool down and begin to reconsider what she, had done, she has done. So that in the, in the future, she will not stand before Moses and begin to criticize him, you know, in a negative manner. So Miriam was shut outside the camp for seven days and the people did not, did not set out on the march until Miriam was brought in again. Do you know what? This woman caused the whole entire procession to stop. The entire nation could not march forward because of her. And after that, after seven days, she was healed, of course. Naaman, Naaman, in 2 Kings chapter 5, the Bible, the Bible speaks of him as a man of his master, a man of his master, a man, great man in the eyes of his master, a man in a favor with his master. Why? Because the Bible says the Lord had granted victory to Syria through him. He was a mighty man of valor. Naaman. The Bible says, but he was a what? A leper. But he was saved by a little girl that had been taken out uh, captive out of Israel. When she saw him, she spoke to her mistress and says, Lord, my God, my God, if my Lord was in uh, Samaria, if he only could see the prophet in Samaria, he would cure him of this leprosy. The Bible said, Naaman, hearing that, he went to the king of Syria. The king of Syria writes a letter to the king of Israel saying, I am sending you my great, my general. Will you heal him of leprosy? When the, when the king read the letter, the Bible says he tore his clothes and said, my goodness, my goodness, I, am I God? Am I God? Why is this man even considering this, sending his, 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 his servant to heal him? I am not God. This one I cannot deal with. Oh. The Bible says there was a man called Elisha. The man of God, the prophet, he heard about it. And he says, go, go, go and tell the king that he should not tear his clothes anymore. Just bring that guy to me. Send that leper to me. And they sent him to him. And we know what happened. The, 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 the prophet told him to go and dip himself seven times into the river Jordan. And the Bible says, after the seventh time, his flesh was restored like that of a child. Do you understand? God is able and he will. There's nothing that he cannot heal. Hallelujah. This young man, we are, we, are, we are back to this leper. This leper knew that the law had no remedy for leprosy. He knew it. He knew it. Because the last time we see somebody being healed of leprosy is Naaman. Up until this time, Jesus' time, nobody has ever, had ever been healed of leprosy. And he knew that there was a God. There is a God who did it before. If he did it before, guess what? He can do it again. He can do it again. There is no need why I should live in this colony. There is no need why I should live in this prison. There is no need why I should be, uh, live in this, in, in this limitation. There is a God who has done it before. If he did it for Miriam, if he did it for Naaman, he can do it for me too. And he said, you know what? Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. This man's faith was in God, was stirred up. He had a revelation of the person and the power of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Paul talks about the mysteries of Jesus Christ, which are revealed, revealed by the spirit of the living God. This man had a revelation. He saw what the crowd missed. The crowd was just following for miracles, for, for, for bread, but he saw healing in him. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Too desperate to follow the law. He decided to break protocol. He decided to break tradition. Tired of the chains. Tired of the label. Tired of the stigma. Defined by the norm he def was defined by the norm. He defied the norm and went for the unheard of. Fully convinced for he of his healing. 
He breaks away from the colony. He breaks away from the outcasts. There are some people that you're going to walk away from. You have been classed with them. You have been clustered with them as outcasts. But you, my friend, you are going to find yourself. You are going to discover yourself and discover the God that you, that you worship. And you're going to step out of them and begin to claim what belongs to you. What has always been waiting for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk out of the crowd. Stand out of the crowd. You have been hanging around the same people who are negative, the same people who have given up on life. Come on, this is the hour for you to arise and say enough is enough. I am stepping out of this clan. I am stepping out of this tribe. I am stepping out of this habit. I am stepping out in the name. You leave them alone. He walked away from the colon. I want you to picture him. I don't know if he must have researched about the itinerary of Jesus. Where Jesus is going to pass. He walked away from the colon. He did the unthinkable. And when Jesus came, he forgot about the law, which says you're not supposed to come before people. You're not supposed to mingle with crowds. He forgot all that. All that went through the window. There are some things that, there are some traditions that have gone to go. They've got to go. For you to get your healing, you've got to step out of the ordinary, out of the norm, <laughs> out of the norm, out of the code, whatever they call it. Huh? He stepped out, and the Bible says he ran to Jesus. He ran to Jesus, and he fell before him, prostrated himself before him. And worshipped him. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about worship. He worshipped him. He worshipped him. Jesus Christ was worshipped. The first time Jesus Christ was worshipped. Do you remember when, when that was? The first time Jesus was worshipped? Anybody? Jesus Christ was worshipped for the very first time after he was born by three wise men. As a child. This is the second time as we see him being worshipped as an adult. He's worshipped by none other than an outcast. None other than a drunkard. None other than a leper. None other than whatever you call whatever label that has been put upon you. He worshipped him. <laughs> Why? Because he had gotten a revelation of who he truly is. Worshippers, you can never worship God until you have known who he is. Hallelujah. The Pharisees had missed it. The Sadducees had missed it. The scribes had missed it. The religious men had, the crowd had missed it. But this leper saw what they did not see. I don't know how many times people, <laughs> some people walk in here, but there are some people who see other things. There are some people who see beyond. <laughs> you've got to go deeper. Deep calls unto deep. You've got to go deeper. You've got to see beyond the mundane. You've got to see beyond this man standing be 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 before you. You've got to see be beyond this guy's play. You've got to see deeper. There are some glasses that we need to put on. <laughs> There's a movie I watched recently and this man has got him glasses that, you know, take him into another world. Somebody says, put on these glasses and you will see. He sees an, another reality opens before his very eyes. Ha! Huh? You need a, set, a different set of, of, of glasses. When I was in the, in the world drinking myself, I had on other glasses. But when I changed glasses, hey, I was open to a new world. My God. My God. Many people missed Jesus Christ. They were just followers and he was looking for worshippers because they did not know him. Are you a worshipper, child of God? You online, are you a worshipper? Or are you just a follower? Charles Stanley once said that he believed that most Christians in most churches have never worshipped God. He says some go to, to church to take a walk. Some go to church to laugh and talk. Some go to church to meet a friend. For some people, all this that we are doing is relevant. They're saying, when does he finish? That we can, we can have a chat. When does he finish? 
<laughs> so some go to church to, just to spend their time there. Some go to church to meet another. Some go to church a fault to find. Why is he putting on that shirt today? Has pastor cut all his hair? What's wrong with him? You know, the message, the message is being preached meanwhile. And for <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why, why, why he's doing, why is he dressed like that? You know, these girls, how did they worship? <laughs> A fool to find. You are busy, like you are like the police. Others are worshiping, but you are just, you are a spectator. I will not be here again. But there's somebody who came to worship my friend. The wise, he says, go to church to worship God. They go to church to worship God. Hopefully, you came to worship him. Hopefully, you online, you are worshiping him as well. Ask your neighbor, what are you here for? <laughs> Listen, the church building is a place of worship. But what makes it a place of worship is true worshipers. You understand? True worshipers are the ones that make a house of worship a house of worship. Not just followers. More often than not, we go to church, but we don't worship. We sing songs, but we don't worship. Worship is more than songs. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. Where it's all about you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made for his soul. Yeah, it's all about him. It's more than a song. What if the, the worshiper lead, sings a song that you don't like? Is, this your, is your Sunday gone? <laughs> you need to worship beyond the songs. Yeah. Worship beyond the keyboard. When we, bought, when we got born again, we didn't have keyboards. Yeah. You think I went to the Lord because there were keyboards? No. The keyboard was not there. We were playing these drums. Baka, baka, bam, baka, bam, 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 baka, bam. Those, those African drums. That's, and we are dancing to them, you know. And dancing, da dancing in dance. Not in this cup, on this carpet. For you on the carpet, you, you look at the carpet. <laughs> my dress. Pastor, my dress which I bought on Oxford Street. And I took an hour trying to make this makeup. Put, how, how they are even, how I can't even cry because the mascara is going to run. And, and the wig will fall off. Let the wig fall off. Let the mascara fall. You can't worship God when you are conscious of yourself. You've got to get lost in the worship. A worshiper gets lost in God. He gets, he does not know what is happening around him. If you came to church and you were too conscious of yourself, of who you are, they will see me fall. You have not, to, that's why Stanley says most people don't worship. You've got, you got to get here and get lost. Travel into the spirit. You cannot. He's looking for his spirit. They that worship him, worship him. Must, must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. You've got to disappear into the spirit realm, my, my friend. Get out of the physical into the spirit. <laughs> That's why this man, the leper, got out of the, of the physical. He forgot he, how, 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 his status. He forgot about his, forget about your status and seek God. <laughs> An outcast. It's up to them. For me, I know what I am here for. We listen to sermons, but we don't worship. All these things are elements of worship, but they are not worship in and of them, themselves on their own. Which means that you can do all of them, but have failed to worship. And you know why? The, re the, reason, the reason is because we have not received a revelation of, who, of the person and the power of the person that we are worshipping. We do not know who we worship. Jesus Christ 
tells the Samaritan woman, you people worship a God that you do not know. <laughs> but the people who know their God, my friend, they know they stand out of the crowd. They worship God in spite of the crowds. And listen, some of these crowds are not even outside. Most of these crowds are inside you. You see a person walking, you see just a unit, yeah? But inside him, there are crowds. <laughs> crowds, crowds of children, crowds of, of money. Crowds. All, of the, all of them, are in, you cannot worship when you are too crowded. You can't. I worship you, Lord. Oh, how am I going to say this? How, how will this week end? Oh, my God, I don't do I worship. You are crowded. You can't worship. You've got to silence the crowds. You've got to go further than the crowds. That's when you can touch him. The crowds, most of the crowds are not outside. They're inside you. You talk about schizophrenics. <laughs> I think Christians are the most schizophrenics. is not what you what is inside what you see is something else on the on the inside is there are, there are split personalities that's why we can't worship him if you come into the place of worship make sure that the crowds are silenced silence them inside you tell yourself to, that's why the, 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 the psalmist says my soul Worship the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. He commands his soul. You are in charge. If you are not in charge, the self will take over. You will be here, but you will be thinking about the, 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 the chicken you left in the oven. You think about the bills. You think about what? You are not here. You are like a parked car that's outside there. Can you worship? Can you be here and worship God? The leper said, I'm not going to be held by the crowd. He came and knelt before him, worshipped him and says, Lord, if you will, you can make me whole. You, you can imagine the commotion that he caused. If a leper, an unclean person walks in here, you should see how most of us would be scampering for chairs. Oh my God, oh my God, he's here. There was chaos. As he ran, people, the crowd must have been, must have dispersed. They thought Jesus Christ was going to disperse too. Thank God. He's, thank God Jesus Christ did not run away when, when I came, when I was a drunkard. He did not, he did not run away when I, when, whenever I fail him, he does not run away. But when I fail people, they run away from me. You, I thank God that you are not God. Thank God you are not God. <laughs> if you were God, I would have, thank God. He doesn't run away from me. He will not run away from you. People will run away from you when you make the slightest mistake. <laughs> Isn't it a pity? A person running away from a person knowing, well knowing that you're not an angel. It's a pity. Come on. We need to outgrow that if we are going to see heaven. Do you understand? The commotion that was caused was immense. And he comes and calls him Lord. He falls and calls him Lord. A title of God. which A title of God because he knew in his mind, in his heart, that God had the ultimate authority over people and things and diseases. Even his condition, he was Lord over. Even in the grave, he is Lord. Even in the grave, he is Lord, even, even in the grave. He is Lord, even in the grave. He is Lord. He knew that even with leprosy, he is Lord. Even with whatever situation you, you, you are in, he is Lord. He says you are, you are able. 
you are powerful. He's worshiping him. Lord, you are able. Lord, you are powerful. Lord, you are a great healer. When you open, no one can close. When you say yes, no one can say no. Even in this disease, you can heal me. Even you can heal even cancer. You can give me children, Lord. If you will, you can. Because I know you are able. You can heal me of cancer. If you will, you can. If you will. Because I know you can. That is a worshiper. He's worshiping past his limitations. He's expressing unwavering trust because he knows that Jesus Christ is able to heal him. Hallelujah. If you will, you can. I, I know. In other words, it's not about your, the question is not about the ability to heal. No. That is settled. That we need, as a child of God, you need to come to a point where all these things are settled. You should be sorted in your mind that God is able to heal you. He's able. He's able to deliver you. He's able to elevate you. If he wills. Hallelujah. And I, I have got good news for you. He wills. He wills. It's just a question of willingness and he wills. <laughs> he says, all I know is worshiping. I am right in the right place before the right person. The power in you is able to heal me right here, right now. Listen, the outcast stops Jesus. He stops the procession. Authentic worship will stop Jesus in his tracks. If Jesus Christ was on his way to Thames Mead and he finds authentic worshipers here, I can guarantee you he will stop here. He will stop at your address. He will stop. He will stop. You can cause him to stop. You can arrest him to stop. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. If you worship him, you can catch his attention. This man caught his attention. Remember, no one in his right mind can even come near to a leper. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 verse 3, and Jesus was moved. Jesus was moved because this man touched him. You see, once you touch him, he reciprocates the touch. Some of us want, Lord, touch me, but you haven't touched him. You haven't touched him. You've got to touch him. <laughs> this man touched him. The Bible says that he stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I will, son. I will be clean right now. And the Bible says immediately the man was cleansed of leper. Let's proceed. Jesus Christ often healed at a distance, you know. He would just send the word. <laughs> but on this occasion, he touched him. Hallelujah. He touched him. You can, he can touch you. True worshippers stop Jesus, my friend. They touch him. They move him. And when they move him, he, he in turn touches them. Hallelujah. He responded. He responded to the leper's positive faith and touched him. He breaks tradition. Jesus Christ breaks tradition. Like I said, no person in his right mind can touch a leper. No person could touch me. Even I was a drunkard. No person. No person. How could this beautiful woman have loved me? <laughs> you guys, you are joking. You see me, Jesus Christ has given me, has given me an, another, another face. I'm just like a baby, you know. But in those days, <laughs> those days there was something else. But he touched me. Jesus responds to the labor's positive faith. Jesus Christ responds to positive faith. The crowds were with him, but Jesus Christ healed this man. He reverses tradition. Instead of the illness, of the uncleanness, of the man spreading to Jesus Christ, listen what happened. Jesus Christ spreads his goodness to him. When Jesus Christ touches you, his goodness spreads to you. His goodness. Not your goodness, but his goodness. The one who was an outcast becomes clean and accepted. He came to give grace to the outcasts, remember. This was a divine exchange. In a place of worship, where true worship has happened, there is divine exchange. You can never go before a king, a queen. You can't go into, into Buckingham Palace and come back empty-handed. No. That's psychic leg. You have to come back loaded. The queen has got to put something in you. Because that's, that's what they do. So what about the king of kings? You worshipped him and you come back empty-handed? Never. There's a divine exchange. He took the leprosy 
and gave him healing because he worshipped him. Isn't that what he did for us at the cross? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, for our sake, he, God, made Jesus Christ to be seen. He became seen. At the cross, he became seen. The one who knew no sin. Why? So that in him we may become the righteousness of God. This man became whole. He received a touch of restoration. He received a touch of healing. He received a touch of a new identity. This morning, somebody is receiving a touch of restoration, a touch of healing, a touch of new identity. The label that people have put on you, the devil has put on you, is gone in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. There is a reversal in the name above every other name. And he tells him, go and show yourself the priests. Go and testify. In other words, go and tell them where this has happened. Because the priests had never seen it. Such healing had never happened in their lifetime. It was new. It was a new thing. God is doing something new. He's going to do something in your life that has never been done before. Go testify. Go and be a testimony. God turned him into a testimony. God is turning you into a testimony. Why? Because authentic worshippers touch God and he touches them. You will become a new creation. You will become a public testimony in the name of Jesus, of what God can do in the name above every other name. By your testimony, many will know that there is a God who is able and willing, who is able and willing, who is able and willing to turn your life around. This man became a testimony to the priests, to the naysayers, those who have put you down. You are about to, to, to metamorphose before their very eyes. Because of the power of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And that power, my friend, can be accessed through worship. Through worship. Through worship. You can imagine the commotion that was caused in the temple when this man appears. He's still in, in those rag clothes, torn clothes, and he appears and he begins, oh, everybody's running. Said, no, 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 I'm clean. I'm clean. The people, some people knew you in the yesterday, but God is turning you into a tomorrow in the name of Jesus. They were asking, is it true? Listen, there are people. I told, I told, I told people here. There's a young man. I used to teach in, in, my, in, my alcohol, in my alcohol. I used to teach. I was a teacher in secondary. I used to teach something similar to English and commerce. You know? One of my students came to London and they told him, my middle name is Chief. They told him, Chief is alive. He said, who are you talking about? He said, Chief. He said, no, he cannot be. That, that guy cannot be alive. Unless I see him with my two eyes, I will not believe that he's alive. And this young man brings him to me and says, yes. Oh, you are still alive. <laughs> is it true? People are going to look at you and say, is it true? Is this true? Is this? I was just giving an example of Titus. There are some people who say, is this Titus? He's here. I'm not, I'm not speaking behind his back. Is it true? Jesus is about to showcase you <laughs> before the world. Hallelujah. Before the world. Listen, as I bring this to a landing, <laughs> Whatever your situation, whatever, whatever means whatever, whatever your habit, whatever your weakness, whatever your sin, whatever means whatever, choose to be a worshiper, a true and authentic worshiper. Do not let any situation hinder you from worshiping God, from touching God. Do not let those crowds in the inside hinder you. Do not let people outside hinder you. There are people who know you. They know you. They know your weaknesses. They know who you are. Some of them are from your village. They know you. They know how crazy you are. Do not, do, not even those ones should step in your way. Ignore them. It's none, none of their business. It's between you and your God. Oh. This leper did not allow all that to stop him. The, 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 the public, the crowds did not stop him. He was unstoppable. You can become unstoppable. 
He broke the norms. You can break the norms. You can break tradition. And this is what happened. He approached Jesus Christ with boldness and confidence. God is looking for confident worshippers, confident children. Listen, listen. This morning I was driving. It's, 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 it has happened many times. And I'm not criticizing my, my, my children. I'm just one. Just be free. They enter my car. This is my car, which I bought. And I'm playing a particular music. The moment they enter the car, I say, where's your phone? I say, it's there. They will get the phone and you enter your password. Tell the password and they will change the, the music straight away to their music. <laughs> With the boldness and the confidence. And I'm saying, wow. If this was some, if somebody somewhere and entered my car and asked me this, I would throw them out, straight away, out of my car. But they have that boldness. They have that confidence because they, it's their dad. They are, they are comfortable. They can do it. They will change the music and I will, I will, I will, I will, I will comply. <laughs> I will enjoy it as well. Because of the boldness and the confidence. So do not come in the presence of God timid. You know, and unsure of yourself because yesterday you made a mistake and, you, and everybody saw you and they're talking about you and you, 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 you and come on, shed that off in the name above every other name. Enter with the boldness. Enter with the confidence. In the name, you are entering the, the house of your father. You are in the presence of your father. The rest of the people can go hang themselves. I said it. let them go you are here <laughs> what will they say? you will go back the same way come in boldly Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 to 16 says for we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and unable to sympathize and have shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of, the temp of temptation. He is aware. It is but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are. He has been tempted. There's nothing new before him. Nothing, listen, there's nothing you are about to do or will ever do <laughs> that will shock him. People will be shocked. Let them be shocked. <laughs> but your father, your high priest, cannot be shocked. Hmm? In verse 16, it says, Therefore, with that knowledge in the back pocket, <laughs> let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, <laughs> the throne of God's unmerited favor to his sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures. You see, the problem with you is you tend to become so sanctimonious and so self-righteous as if you are an angel. And yes, yesterday you messed up. On Monday you tripped and fall down. It's because, you know, you are, you are covering your face with, some, with, with something. But you yourself, is a, you, are, you are a failure at times. But it never discards, discards you. Why are you discarding the person who, who failed yesterday? That's why he's saying, let us boldly come to him, fearlessly, confidently. Just like that, that, that my son enters the car and confidently changes the music. Hmm? That we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. Stand on your feet wherever you are. He understands. He is able. And he is willing. So come with faith as you worship him. Touch him and he will touch you. You will be healed. You will be delivered. He will restore you. He will free you from whatever leprosy it is you may have. Leprosy of sickness. Leprosy of sin. Whatever it is that has made you an outcast. He will make you a testimony. Lift those hands to the Father. He is able.
Thank you so much for listening to this sermon, and I know you've been blessed. For more information about Shiloh Tabernacle and other sermons, please visit our website, www.shiloh.org.uk. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, at Shiloh LDN. Once again, that's at Shiloh LDN. You've been listening to Shiloh Tabernacle London, changing lives, building dreams. Until next time.